And now it's time to answer the question that nobody asked. Will Permobile Aggressive Tread Tires fit on a Quantum Power Chair? And also, why does this matter and why should you care about it? Well, if you have a Stretto or an Edge or, well, pretty much any modern model of the Quantum Chairs, you may notice that the ride quality, eh, it might be hit or miss depending on the model you have, but the hard foam that they use inside the Primo Power Tracks tires that almost every wheelchair uses, well, it's rock hard. These tires are actually a really good compromise between solid foam filled and air filled tires. The foam compound in these Permobile tires is significantly softer than the Primo Power Tracks. So if these will fit on that, that means you can get better ride quality for a not too insane price. These are actually Permobile branded tires, if you can see here. Yeah, there we go, it says Permobile. They're manufactured by CST Tires. But you can get these for, well, currently they're about $129 each on a website that I will link below. $258 for a pair of these obviously isn't free, but I think you're probably gonna pay about the same amount getting air-filled tires with tubes, depending on where you purchase them. But check this out. Look how soft those are. That's not what I call a scientific test. Anyways, let's grab our tools, get on the floor, jack this thing up, and see if we have enough clearance for these things to fit. Here we have our Quantum Edge 3 Stretto, and here are the new tires. As you can see, they're pretty much the same diameter. These do have a little bit more of a dome shape to the rubber though, but it compresses as you run around and basically flares out. These things, the foam is rock hard, so if we look really careful at the tread pattern here, you can see running around in the warehouse, our contact patch is only these two rows of lugs right here. These ones do not even touch the floor. So after we swap these out, I'm gonna run around in here and outside a little bit, and then we'll see how wide the contact patch is on this tire compared to this one. Because the foam will compress in this one and the tire will flare out a bit, whereas this one, that does not happen at all. Let's get our jack under the chair here. And by the way, I always have to mention anytime someone sees one of these jacks, they wanna know where it is, how to get it, and all this stuff. This thing I got in like 2004. It was a Harbor Freight thing, and I don't think they sell it anymore. It's a low profile US General aluminum jack. And the minimum lift height on this thing appears to be uh, right at about three inches, maybe a hair under. But I found this jack without the little rubber thing on there. Seems to fit underneath most chairs. Just barely. Let's get this hoopty up off the ground. There we go, doesn't take much. As you can see here, we have some lovely customizations. There's lug nut spike caps and matching blue breaker release handles. There's a link down in the video description on where to buy those. There's a viewer of the channel that actually makes those. Uh-oh. I think I've forgotten to tighten up the lug nuts last time I had the wheels off this thing. And those are not supposed to unscrew like that. By the way, if you do end up getting these quantum lug nut spikes, easiest way I've found to get them off is to just get a little knife or something with a semi-sharp edge on it, and you can just kind of gently pop them off like that. Won't damage anything if you're careful, but it grips on the layers of the TPU and basically lets you pull them right off. Should probably be using power tools for this, but I don't have any here with me. And there we have a wheel. This is gonna be just like pretty much any other mobility chair that exists. It's gonna have a split rim. You take the two halves apart, pull the tire off, put your new tire on, and then put it back together. This one appears to have Allen cap bolts that hold the two halves together. And there's some weird stickers down in here. What do these say? Uh, that's in German or some language. And this one says, deflate tire completely before removing wheel nuts. Ah, yes. If you do happen to have air filled tires, you must deflate the tires before you take apart these two halves of the wheel. Otherwise things will break and um, 
death and or destruction may occur. I'm joking, but seriously, uh, if you have air-filled tires, deflate them before you remove these. Bad things will happen. Okay, this is, what size is this? Looks like a five millimeter. Thank you to the person, by the way, that got me this set of uh, T-handle Allens. I have yet to make a holder for them. I just threw them all in this tray right now. But very handy to have that here at the warehouse. So let's get all these broken loose. Oh, what well, do you know? They used Loctite on these. Fancy. Who'd have thought that a Quantum could have bolts on it that were actually properly tight and have thread locker on them? Yeah, I know. I give, I give Quantum a lot of crap about stuff, but if you've been watching this channel for more than five seconds, you understand. You understand why. Well, that one's talking to us. Okay, get these screws out of the way. There we go. Oh, whoa. I don't think I've had one of these quantum edge tires apart. Look at this. The foam is notched out around the sections of the wheel. Huh, strange. Yeah, you can see our little sort of star pattern here. And the matching foam. Huh, weird. There we go, Primo power tracks. And the size is 3.0 by eight. And our new tires are gonna be the same size, but they are ever so slightly larger. Interesting note though, this does not appear to be the same foam that they use stock on these tires with other chairs. I wonder if Quantum actually uh, is using their own foam here. Yeah, this stuff is strangely compliant. Check it out. So I'm gonna push this wrench into the foam and you can see that compresses pretty dang easily. Huh, interesting. Let me see, I think I've got another set of these tires that fit a lot of other chairs. Let me grab those real quick and I'll show you the difference with the foam. Okay, these are the Primo Power Tracks we just took off of the Stretto. This one here is a slightly older one. This was on a Permobile F3. But let's take a look at the foam here. If I press in on this with the same Allen wrench, you can see that about the same amount of force, it doesn't really push in. Compared to this one, you can see how much more deflection we get. And this whole surface area here is flexing and moving as well. So I'm thinking that Quantum may have used their own foam on these tires to make it a little bit softer. Yeah, you can see this is this is rock hard. Okay, so if the foam compounds are already pretty soft in the tires that come with the chair, what is the point of changing out the tires? Well, that comes down to traction. As I was showing before, you can see the dust here is only on these center two lugs. And that means our contact patch with the ground is only about an inch and a quarter wide. So here's another Primo Powertrax tire. This one has about 450 miles on it. And you can see the center section here is very heavily worn down. Just a tiny bit out here, but most of our wear is right here in the middle. Again, 450 miles on this hard foam filled Primo Powertrax tire. Now this tire is a Permobile Aggressive Tread tire. This one has 810 miles on it. Now you can see we still have wear here in the middle, but if you look close, that wear pattern extends all the way out to these outer lugs. You can see the line where it ends right out here on both sides. And if we measure that, our contact patch is two and a quarter inches wide. So we're getting an entire additional inch of contact patch on the ground in a tire that has, you know, significantly more tread and more gripping ability. That means running around in wet surfaces or loose surfaces, like a little bit of gravel or whatever, you're gonna have significantly more traction between these two tires. An entire inch is huge, not to mention the lug design on these is significantly more aggressive. Well, you know, hence the name, aggressive tread. You can see these are pretty jagged and these are just kind of smooth lugs. So regardless of whether these are going to affect the ride quality or not, 
we're going to get a lot longer life out of them because our contact patch is wider, which means there's more material to wear away. And also we're going to get a lot more grip. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get one of the new tires put on the quantum wheel and see if it fits on the chair. There is one thing I'm kind of wondering about though, seeing as how these don't have a smooth surface and these bolt hubs kind of stick out. If we compare this to the permobile wheels, they are completely smooth around the inner surface. And when the two halves mate together, we have this nice big wide flat area. If we compare that to the quantum wheel, you can see instead of being smooth, it has all these bumps sticking out. So I'm kind of curious if that's going to make a difference or not. But let's find out. Okay, putting this in here, uh, you can see that we've got a gap around all of the edges. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to cause an issue. I can get my finger in here. Basically, the weight of the chair running on the wheel is going to be on these five points here. Wait, is that five, two, four? Actually, six. Six points. <laughs> um, so, I don't know if that's going to affect our ride quality because, well, even the parts where the bolts stick in, there's a tiny bit of a gap there. Hmm. All right, well, we are definitely in experimental phase here. Let's, uh... Let's see what happens. And by the way, these wheels are keyed. You can see here in a couple spots, we have, we have some little metal dowels sticking up. Looks like they're in three different spots. Right here, right here, and right here. Then also we have the cutout for the valve stem if these happen to be air-filled tires. So we wanna look at our wheel here and we can see that the cutout is right here for the valve stem. So we'll want to make sure to line that up. And I should probably have something on the floor here so I'm not scratching up the front of that wheel, but uh, yeah, science. So let's get this kind of lined up here. Get a couple of our screws in. And if you notice here, there's a gap. When you put these screws in, it's gonna start squeezing these two halves together. But when that happens, you need to look out for these little keyed metal dowels that stick out and make sure those line up. So you want to take your time with this. I'm just going to start with three of them for right now, just to get things lined up. Actually, here, let's just put this other tire underneath it, because I don't want to, I don't want to scratch up this wheel. So slowly tightening these down. Just until those dowel pins engage. Okay, there we go. I can see the gap is closed up. Yeah, I am really curious here to see without that inner foam padding and this and since these wheels are not smooth inside if it's going to make this uh, ride very bumpy and if it's going to work at all. Now I'm just snugging these up by hand. Regardless of whether this works or not, I'm not going to be leaving these tires on these wheels and on that chair. These aggressive tread tires are actually for something else. So, um I mean, it feels like they're on there. Knowing that there's that gap inside though kind of has me wondering. Once we get the weight of the chair on here and we start driving around, it could make these lopsided. Okay, looks like our fitment on the fender here is fine. I can still get my finger in there, no problem. Let's get a couple of these on. And then we'll check around back and make sure clearance on the chair frame and the motors is still good. I'm sure it'll probably be fine. On paper, these are the same size tires, but obviously they are a tiny bit bigger in the real world. Okay, we got those two on there. Let's throw it in neutral. Listen as we spin. Don't hear the tire rubbing on anything. I can still just barely get my finger between the motor and the tire. So that seems good there. Then over here on the front, plenty of room on the shock absorber. There you can just barely see around the leg rest. We've got clearance on that shock mount and the other stuff up top here. I took a couple of photos behind the tire there. 
I'll put those on screen so you can see that there's plenty of clearance behind there. These tires aren't really that much wider. They do flare out a little bit on the edges, but it's not enough to um, be any sort of concern. Uh, that's no good. We broke a stud off. Look, it's, it, look, it's finger tight. How on earth did that break? Okay, Quantum, uh, cool story, I guess. Cool story, Hansel. Well, I guess four out of five ain't bad. Um, hmm. We'll have to uh, we'll have to pull this back apart and see if we can figure out if those are replaceable studs or not. That's surprising. I, uh, how did that happen? It's not even remotely cross-threaded, and I was spinning it by hand. Weird. Okay, there we go. Ignoring that missing bolt and stud, our geometry seems to be the same. Casters are level on the front, on the back. Here's our old tire, just for size reference. If we look real close in there, you can see the new tires are just negligibly... Ne the new tires are negligibly... The new tires are basically the same size. They're a tiny bit bigger, but a negligible amount. Apparently I can't talk today. Okay, I'm going to clean up some of the stuff on the floor here. I'm going to hop in this, run around, and see if I can feel this side wobbling. So far it seems to be pretty good. Um, I am getting a slight bumping sensation, but this chair has been sitting in here for a while. And, actually, let's see here. Oh, that's coming from our casters. Actually, I think it's coming from our other drive tire. See how this one's not rolling? I still feel the bumping even though that tire is not turning. So I think maybe it's coming from this or one of the casters. It's probably not something most people would notice, but I happen to since I'm really paying attention right now. Okay, um, I think we're gonna go ahead and swap the one on the other side too. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm just gonna knock this out here real quick and then we will reconvene once the, well, once we get this tire also changed and we'll go for a rip and see what I think. While we're in here screwing around, let's take a look at these hubs and see if these are replaceable. They kind of feel like they might be press-in studs. Uh, let's see if we can get one of them out of here. Everything's a hammer. All right, cool. These do appear to be replaceable studs. Uh, says left hand thread. All right, cool. I'm gonna get some measurements of this so we can replace the one on the other side. But uh, yeah, handy. Eh, probably shouldn't have picked up this chair from the back with the jack. Whole thing's kind of sliding around on me a little bit. <laughs> Okay, we've got these things on here, and uh, I don't know, I do like the way they look. Okay, so that weird bumping sensation that I was getting before seems to be gone now. I think what that was, was these tires here, with the softer foam compound when the chair sits around for a while, you get sort of a flat spot that goes away. And that's one thing with both of these tires, since they both have pretty soft foam compounds. Apparently Quantum fills their own, and I actually, I mean, 
But with the softer foam, if you sit still for an hour or two, you may notice kind of a bump, 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 bump as you run around for the first few minutes. It's not really bad or anything, but you just might notice it. Let's compare the foam here. Okay, so this is a standard Primo Powertrax. Same foam compound that's used on many other chairs out there. You can hear that uh, kind of the weight of it and the thud when it hits the ground and how high it bounces. Let's compare it to this one. Here that sounds more like tire. That's because things are moving around in here. So this, uh, I can't quantify it, but this one also feels a little bit lighter. So interesting note, I didn't realize that Quantum was, you know, using their own foam compound, so that's kind of cool. But same tire tread that tends to wear in the middle. Trying to get a good camera angle here, but so far from the little bit of running around we've been doing, it may not show on the camera as well, but we're getting a much wider contact patch. And right now we are at about an inch and three quarter of contact on this. And as we run around more and the center part wears a little bit, that's gonna widen out. But once again, our tread is significantly more, significantly more aggressive on these. And even running around in here in the warehouse, which is kind of dusty, I can't power slide this chair anymore. With these tires, I could spin around and slide all I want. These things grip. Oh, and that's the other thing too, is the, the rubber compound itself is a lot softer on these tires. And you might think that that would result in the tires wearing out quicker, but again, on my F3 over here, I've got the aggressive tread tires. I got 800 miles on a set of them, and I run around in deep gravel every day. That chair's tuned up. I'm constantly doing burnouts, and, oh here, I've got one right here. <laughs> After 800 miles, this is what these aggressive tread tires look like. That to my eye is not doing too bad. We're getting down to the wear bars here in the middle. These are still serviceable on another chair for sure. But, uh, but that's just absolutely insane in my mind. With the old Primo Power Tracks on my Amy Systems chair, I mean, granted I weighed 315 pounds back then, but I was going through a set of those Primos every 350 miles, or about 90 days. Um, so yeah, I don't know. These things seem pretty good. So my C300 that I have out at the bus, it's got the standard Primo Power Tracks tires on it. That thing gets stuck in the gravel out there constantly. But these tires, I can move around no problem. So anyways, I'm not trying to shill tires. I'm just saying it may improve your quality of life if you have better traction and a softer ride. And you know, all things considered, the $258 or whatever it was to buy, buy a pair of these, I think is totally worth it. Oh man, it's starting to get a little bit warm in here. I had to turn on the blower. I'm gonna run around outside a little bit and go on some of the pavement and hills and stuff that are out here and uh, see how it performs. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, um, holy crap. I knew I liked these tires, but uh, the one downfall of this Stretto was the gravel. Trying to make this thing move in gravel, especially if you stop and change directions without doing, you know, the S-turn maneuvers and whatnot. Which, by the way, uh, I'll link to that video up above. What, did they call what was the name of that video? Um, oh, caster control, that was it. Even without doing that in the gravel out there, this thing maintained traction. So, yeah. I don't know what the long-term feasibility is gonna be of these tires. I don't know if the fact that that foam isn't in contact all the way inside the tire and the wheel, if that's gonna cause a problem. But for right now, it seems fine. They're not wobbling. Uh, I'm impressed. Once again, love these tires. 
Now, running around in the gravel is kind of cheating a little bit, as it were, for measuring contact patch. But you can see here, the entire width of the tire was definitely in contact with the gravel and the ground. Now, the Strato already has pretty good ride quality. It's, um, reliability aside, the ride quality on this chair, I think, is really good. I, I would almost rival it to the forefront or, well, we won't say it's as good as an Amy Systems or the Frontier V6, but the ride quality is very good. These tires, though, improved that. So if you're thinking about going for air-filled tires on your chair, check out these Permobile Aggressive Tread tires. Right now, they're $129 for each tire on buildmywheelchair.com. They're not a sponsor or anything. They're just a site that I like to support because they very much have the right to repair mindset and they can get you pretty much any part for, you know, the major brands of chairs that you need. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with this. Once again, I'm just going to say it because I don't know if it's going to become an issue. I don't use this chair daily, so I'm not going to be putting 800 miles on these tires on this chair. But inside that wheel, I don't know if that's a problem or not. I do not know if these things are required for stability versus, you know, every other foam filled tire where the inside is just smooth like this. So that's the only unknown here, but you know, first impressions, I don't think it matters. I'm no professional or factory authorized anyone, but, uh, you know, if I was going to use this chair daily, I would just rock with these and not worry about it. So there you go. A little bit of an experiment today. I think it was successful. Um, once again, long term, I don't know. I keep repeating that just because, you know, if there is an issue later on, I don't want someone to say, oh, you told me it would work perfectly. Well, I told you it worked on this chair and I've put a quarter mile on it. So <laughs> take that as you will. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed, and I will see you guys on the live stream tomorrow, which I believe is Thursday. Oh, we're going to be working on building some remote wheelchair shutdowns, like a remote, well, actually, one of these remotes that you can use to stop a power chair or soccer chair in an emergency situation. Hopefully the parts arrive. I think they should. Oh, wait, the phone is ringing right now. I think these are my parts. Hey, what's up? All right, cool. Perfect timing. Um, I'm probably going to head out of the warehouse here in about a half hour. I'll let you know when I'm headed your way. Okay. Okay. Good, bye. All right, bye. How is that for timing? <laughs> okay, the parts are here. We're going to do that tomorrow on the live stream. See you then.